Welcome back to Perfect Pour, the art of craft beer and spirits, the show that highlights artisanal libations from around the world. I'm your host and spirit medium, Terry Collins. We're now going back to the new Copper Fiddle Distillery, which opened in Lake Zurich, Illinois, earlier this year. We're also going to take a look at a few seasonal beers that are just right for the holidays or the cooler weather. So let's first rejoin Jose and Fred over at Copper Fiddle. Terry Collins back with you on Perfect Pour, and what a better way to finish than with a tour of the distilling facilities here at Copper Fiddle. Along with Jose and Fred, let's do it, guys. All right. Well, what we have here, uh, Terry, is our three mash tuns. Uh, they're about 103 gallons a piece, and um, uh, false bottoms, stainless steel. Uh, we had them customized and uh, to our needs, suit our needs for what we do here. And uh, what we do basically is uh, put our grains in, and they're nothing more than big cereal cookers. We cook them till we get the uh, proper, uh, the amount of extraction of starch that we want, and then we uh, add and natural enzymes to the uh, to to the uh, to the liquid as we're cooking it, and uh, at different stages, and we break down the starch into basic sugars, uh, maltose dextrose primarily, and grain sugars. And then once we're done with that process, after a few hours, we uh, uh, roll up a portable pump, we open our valves here on the bottom, and we pump out into our fermenters, which we'll see next. And uh, basically, uh, we do one at a time. Three of these uh, mash tons fill one of the 1,000-liter uh, fermenters, about 265 gallons uh, uh, each fermenter. I would say that uh, if someone's interested in getting into the distilling business and wants to learn it from the ground up, come in here after we do the mash and we will let you clean out the mash tons <laughs> that is quite a fun job that's that is a real like fun that. job that's an honor yeah it is it's an, an honor. honor yeah all right we're at the next stop along the way which is the fermenting tanks okay so what we have here is we've uh we've done our mash in uh on the uh, mash tons and now we've pumped into our fermenters uh we fill these up uh, almost to the top actually a few inches from the top and what we're doing here is uh, we, we, we come in at about 130 degrees. We want to cool this down to the low 70s, which is our pitch point, pitch temperature for our yeast. We add about 11 pounds of yeast to this, and we've got a, a nice sweet liquid right now, grain, uh, a grain mash. And uh, we, uh, we want to break down that sugar and have that sugar eaten up by the yeast so that we're creating a, a really nice drinkable ethanol. Uh, so what we do is we pitch in our yeast um, and then we um, let it go for about five and a half days and uh, during that time it's really bubbling like a cauldron. It, within about six, eight hours it starts bubbling up and we have to keep a close eye out on it, actually put in a cooling coil we have in the background here and drop that in and keep our temperature ideal at our ideal point for, for fermentation uh, so that it doesn't get too warm. And then uh, once we're done, we let it sediment out after five, six days. Uh, we let it go about another 10 days, seven to 10 days. And once we get to that point uh, with both these fermenters, we will wheel them over to our gin still or to our whiskey still, depending upon what we want to produce. Okay, so what we have here uh, is our gin still. Uh, as you can see, this is a plate uh, column uh, reflux still. And uh, it's about a 58 gallon, 55, 58 gallon still. We fill it up to about right here. Uh, we heat it up. It's also a direct fire. We use electric sti uh, stick immersion heaters for this particular still. It's very accurate, very quick heat up. Uh, it's also very controllable, which we want on this particular type of still. And uh, uh, the vapors come up, they hit each chamber, they reflux a little bit. Uh, the less pure it comes down, the more pure advances. And by really kind of by default, we're making a vodka before we make a gin. Uh, so once we hit that last section where the glass section turret is, uh, we've got a screen in there and that's the, 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 the beginning of our gin basket. Uh, that's where we coarse grind our botanicals uh, and we pour them in. Uh, after the heads come off the, uh, off the run, uh, we stop the still, we pour them in and then we fire the still back up and the uh, vapors come up and they basically press through and pass through the botanicals and once they come over down and condense you've got high proof high flavored gin we uh as the gin comes out we're overproofed 
and over flavored and the reason is is because uh, we will be diluting the pro diluting it down from 130 proof approximately down to our drinking proof of 92 and uh, we want that over flavor so once we get down to our drinking proof we've got just the right flavor profile that we're looking for. Right, so if we're making a Tom Gin, uh, basically what we do is identical process. We're making our base gin, fiddle gin first, clear gin. Uh, and once it comes out, we put it in our holding barrels. We let it resolve for, a, uh, uh, flavors resolve for a week, a couple of weeks. And then we will put them in our used uh, uh, bourbon or whiskey barrels. And uh, they'll spend some time in there. And once uh, we get the right flavor balance, we pull it out, filter it, bottle it, label it, we're done. Now, before we move on, can you give us a hint as to the profile of the, your botanicals for your gins? Oh, okay. Uh, well, being a Jennifer gin, it's, uh, it's only about 90% uh, juniper berry as opposed to a London Dry, which is virtually 100%. Uh, the other 10% is divided up amongst uh, uh, coriander, orange peel, lemon peel, angelica root, orris root. And our little touch to that is uh, we use a little Asian star anise which gives it a little licorice flavor on the finish. Very nice. And I just have to say, steampunks eat your hearts out. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have here is our uh, copper pot still. We use this pot still uh, to create our bourbon product. And this was made in Arkansas by hand, a very colorful, colorful gentleman named Colonel Vaughn Wilson, actually. And uh, it's very old school. This, this technology has been around for hundreds of years. Uh, in the distilling industry, uh, we like it a lot, uh, and it's um, it creates a lot of wonderful flavor um, in, in in the final product. And uh, we use this; it's about 145 gallons, 40 45 gallons. We use this uh, because it creates a completely different flavor from what you saw in the gin still. The gin still creates a very flavorless product before it becomes gin. This uh, basically um, allows us to taste all the uh, the, the, the grainy goodness, basically, that we're working to get in in, in, in the mash process. And that, that grainy goodness follows its way through uh, and across and condenses out uh, and comes out sweet, grainy, and you really get, you can pick out the flavors of the various grains when you're tasting the, uh, uh, the raw product as it's coming off the still. Once it comes off the still, uh, we basically just hold it for a, a short period and then we put it in our small 15 gallon barrels. Uh, we use 15 gallon barrels because basically they age quicker. Uh, a little more expensive, uh, but um, uh, for our purposes, being small batch works really well for us. All right, the final part of the tour here. We've, we've come out of the barrel and we're ready for bottling. Okay, so the last three steps of our process uh, here uh, uh, to finish off our product start with this, starts with this little guy. Uh, whether it comes out of the barrel, uh, uh, the wood barrel, or, or a holding tank, uh, we have to filter the product and proof the product down uh, to our final drinking proof. And uh, uh, prior to doing that, what we do is we use this little play filter machine here. And basically it's a five micron filter and it uh, takes everything out other than color and flavor. And then we go into our next station, which is our bottle filling machine. Our bottle filling machine is a two position machine. It's, it's done by, it's basically controlled by um, uh, volume and, uh, and, and volume and, and time. So uh, we have to actually recalibrate this every time we use it because it's very sensitive. So uh, we fill two bottles at a time. Once we're done filling, actually what I do is I hand one of these bottles to Fred <laughs> and uh, Fred uh, forces, a, uh, forces a cork in the top and wears out his hand in the process. It's all uh, by hand. It's all by hand. It's craft. And uh, once we're done with that, we move on to this little machine right here, which is a, actually a new product. Uh, we put a we put a, we put a labeled bottle in, and we set it here. And the machine senses the bottle uh, label position, and all we do is press down our arm, and it it uh, it applies a label. We do one at a time, and once we're done, we uh, sleeve it. Uh, heat shrink it and it's ready to go in the case and on your bar back. Thanks to Fred and Jose at the Copper Fiddle Distillery. 
And make sure you check out their website at copperfiddledistillery.com for more info and eventually they're going to have information as to where you can order their bourbon and gins in the near future. Now we're going to check out some seasonal craft beers we recently tried. One great thing about living in the Midwest is we have the change of seasons, the full range. And as the weather moves from warmer to colder, I like to go with some heavier, more substantial, sustaining beers. And we've tried three recently, and we sort of climbed the ladder with them. We have from Scotland, Innocent Guns Scottish Porter brewed with molasses and oak barrel aged. Move up the ladder, ladder a little bit more from California, we have from the brewery, their autumn maple, brewed with molasses and maple. And then, the top of the line, we have from Brewdog, also in Scotland, outside of Aberdeen, we have Paradox Jura. And the ABV on these things goes from 7.5 to 10, all the way up to 15. And it was quite fun tasting these. They're all heavier beers. We started with the Innocent Gun. And they have sort of an interesting story. They started out as a brewery that made beer just for the purpose of aging barrels so that those barrels could then be used for scotch. So there is a beer aged, beer barrel aged scotch that's produced in their barrels. And eventually that beer was all thrown away and someone got the idea of actually trying it, realized how good it was, and that's how they started making their products. And this one, the Scotch Porter, the Scottish Porter, is... Um, it's one of their limited edition releases, actually. It's oak-aged, as I mentioned, and it's at 7.5%. It's actually interesting for a porter. They call it a porter, but when it's poured in the glass, it's got a very light color. It's almost like a Doppelbach. That's sort of what I got out of it, color-wise. And the mouthfeel is very light, um, and it's interesting in that the barrel flavor for this really comes through. The oak barrel aging... Um, it really dominates the flavor of the beer. And some of our notes, uh, we had the sweet, grainy, banana bread-like. It was really apparent in the nose, and as soon as we tasted it, that was right up front, the banana bread nature of it. So um, their barrels, obviously, it seemed like they are ex-bourbon barrels because banana is one of the flavors you can get in some bourbons, and that really came through in this beer. It was really apparent right from the start. Um, it's very sweet, as you might imagine, with the banana bread thing going on. As I mentioned, the barrel dominates, and the finish is very short on this beer. It's on your tongue, you get the sweetness from the barrel, and it evaporates pretty quickly. So, that's Innocent Gun, their Scottish Porter. Again, so-called Porter. It's very interesting and very light for a Porter. Then we move up the, the ladder here to the brewery's Autumn Maple. Now, one of the things about any beer I see that has maple in it really gets my attention because I've been on the lookout for a beer that has maple flavor and maple smell forever. For me, that would be the epitome of a fall beer if I could just find that. So I buy every maple beer I can find. I've certainly had the one from Anchor, their Big Leaf Maple, and I've had this one now from the brewery in Orange County, California. This is a Belgian-style brown ale, seasonal. It has spices. It has not only maple syrup, but molasses as well. And as a Belgian... As you might expect, it has that tanginess, that Belgian tang, which comes from the Bredosomiasis yeast. And then it's got, the spice comes through, but it's not a distinctive spice. There is some spice profile in there. I can't pick out one spice from another. Maybe some clove, maybe some coriander, but it's not, not one of those jumps out. So there is spice, and it's a very even spice. But for my money, there's no maple. That does not make it a bad beer. It's an excellent beer. It's an excellent fall beer. It's a Belgian seasonal, which is very difficult to find, I think. An American take, perhaps, on a Belgian style. Uh, a very nice beer, 10%. It reminded me of some of the Belgian triples that I've had, uh, both in terms of the sweetness, the malty sweetness, almost a syrupy nature to it, although the mouthfeel is not as light as the Innocent Gun, but um, it's, got, it's, it's still sort of light for the, for the amount of alcohol that it has. No head on it, but the flavors are there. Um, no maple. I'm still searching for that. So if anyone knows, you can certainly get in contact with us. I'd like to know. Uh, has a cloudy copper color because it is bottle conditioned. Uh, and oh, I forgot one thing about the autumn maple. I don't want to leave it out. It's also got yams. And that was also in the flavor profile. You could get those. I think one of our tasters got that right away when we opened the bottle. Sort of like the banana bread with the innocent gun. Very interesting taste. Belgian, yam, maple, and molasses. All in one nice package from the brewery. And the last one at the top of the ladder is this one from Brewdog, their Paradox Jura. And this one is really interesting because they bottled it in 
X Jura barrels. And of course we had some Jura on earlier in the show. And the great thing about this is a Scotch barrel is an X bourbon barrel. So by using the X Jura barrels, they're getting some of the bourbon and some of the Scotch. And both of those things come through in this beer. And it's a big beer. It's marketed as an Imperial stout. And at 15%, it's well above whatever the cutoff might be for Imperial. And the flavors are massive. You open the bottle and you immediately, from a distance of several feet, you get rum and raisin. And it's potent. It's sweet. The mouthfeel is almost viscous. And it's long-lasting flavor. Um, certainly one of the best winter beers I've had this year. And now the thing is, it's a limited release. We have, I think, batch 186. Um, it's not on their website currently, but you can go to the brewdog.com website to see when they have these releases. And they are worth looking out for. They have several of these that um, were out at the time I bought this. There's an Isla as well, uh, Isla barrel version. Um, there's also a Smokehead version. And they come out with these every so often and they're really worthwhile. They're expensive, but really in real terms, one bottle, if you split one bottle between two people, it's really a sipper. You're gonna get your money's worth, even for the price point. It's really worth searching out and this is gonna keep you very warm in the winter. So you can climb the ladder. If you wanna go a little lighter, you've got Innocent Gun, the Scottish Porter. You've got the brewery with their Autumn Maple, a Belgian style brown. And at the very top of the ladder, and it really will keep you warm, is the Brewdog Paradox Jura. How's that? Some wonderful stuff we've got here on Perfect Pour. Already that time. Time to wrap up another episode of Perfect Pour, the art of craft beer and spirits. I want to thank Jose Hernandez and Fred Robinson of Copper Fiddle Distillery for inviting us to their location. Make sure you check them out at copperfiddledistillery.com and check out their Facebook page as well. And join us next time as we talk with my good friend Manish Kosla, who's in the process of opening a new craft brewery as we speak called Prairie Crafts. We're going to be following them on an ongoing basis so you can see the rather complicated process of starting a brewery. On the next episode, we're also going to take a look at budget bourbons and how to get more bang for your buck with this style of American whiskey. We'll also have tasting notes for some other craft beers, so make sure you join us. For now, I'm Terry Collins, your host and spirit medium, thanking you for joining us on Perfect Pour, the art of craft beer and spirits. Salute.